Hello, my name is Dan Anderson. Today I will be demoing a EcoWave 2 portable air conditioner and heater. It just came out this month, uh, May 2023. And I'll, let's go over the specs first and I'll unbox it. So um, it's an improvement over the first generation EcoFlow Wave. Uh, it has more BTUs, it's smaller, and it has a heating unit. Before it just had an AC unit. Um, let's see some of the specs. It weighs um, 32 pounds or 14 and a half kilograms. Um, the dimensions are in inches 20.4 by 11.7 by 13.2. So basically it's a foot square and about 20 inches deep, more or less. Um, you can control it with a, a panel on top of the unit or with your phone app. Um, and it communicates either with Bluetooth if you're nearby or Wi-Fi if you're remote and it's connected to Wi-Fi. Um, the, it's also quieter than the previous generation. It's 44 to 56 decibels. Um, and it's designed to um, heat or cool 100 eight square feet, which is more than enough for the armadillo because it is um, armadillo's 10 by six and a half feet interior, which is 65 square feet. So that should be plenty. Um, for water resistance, it's uh, rated IPX4. IPX4 means it's um, resistant to splashing. So you could like use it in the rain or in the shower. Um, you just can't submerge it. Um, cooling, it cools 5,100 BTUs. Heating, it heats 6,100 BTUs. It takes five minutes to cool 10 degrees Celsius or 18 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words, it would go from 20, um, 30 to 20 Celsius or 86 to 68 Fahrenheit. And also takes five minutes to heat um, the same amount, um, 10 degrees Celsius or 18 Fahrenheit. So let's get to the unboxing here. So let's unbox the EcoWave 2. You notice that this needs to be upright. Um, before you run it, it should be upright for at least two hours in case it was shipped in an odd orientation or you had it sideways or something. That's just to let all the coolant settle. Um, now I've always kept this upright so it doesn't apply here. Let's open it up. Notice it says up. The first thing out is the hoses. Um, there's two, a big and a small hose. So the intake is a big hose and, and the exhaust is the little hose, pretty much the same. Um, then there's also a optional drainage line, which makes it more efficient. You don't have to use a drainage line it, when you're in um, cooling mode and the humidity is under 70%, in that case, it, optionally, it will um, evaporate the any water there and expel it in the exhaust. But if it's humid, more than 70% humidity, or if you're in heating mode, you need to have this ex exhaust line here. It also comes with the power cord. Let's see what else. This is a adaptive, fits the hose to the, um, the exhaust or the intake. Another one. Now let me explain about these exhaust systems. It takes two. One is input and the other is output. So you, when you operate this indoors, if uh, you have the the input into the the heating element and the output. Ex um, exhaust the hot air out. Now, 
You could also run this outside. In that case, you'd have the cool air blowing in and the to be cooled air being sucked out and into the unit to be cooled. So it's kind of internally um, consistent. It doesn't take any, it doesn't force any air out or in of the, of the trailer. Some instructions. Packing material, my favorite. This contains optional, um, it's hard to see here, it's a, a cord storage unit. You could wrap the cord around here and attach this to the air conditioner unit, which I will do. Finally, EcoFlow unit here at the bottom. So to review here, as I said, there's there's um, two outputs and two inputs. So the the, the to be cooled air comes in on the bottom here, the front bottom, and it comes out to the top. Let's take this tape off and protect it. And you can also just and you can see this just how the vents are directed outside. So, to be cool air comes in and cool air comes out. And there's a control display at the top there. In the back, it, it, this takes air in, and this should be outside air, and it, and it blows it out, and that should be blown outside. So, if you operate this inside, you have the, the, the hoses like this. You have an air being taken out from the outside in the big big tube and blown out with the little tube. So it's in, in and out from the back. Now if you operate this outside, you want these hoses in the front. It takes in to be cooled air from inside and blows it back to the, the trailer. Finally, there's a template here. So this has the different two different hoses and you could fit this or try to fit it in, in, in a window here. Or you could actually use this as a template to cut something out that fits the window opening exactly. Let's show how this is set up here. So we have a input to the, the heating unit or that takes in external air and uses to cool the inside air and expels the heated air out here. So it comes in the, the, big, the big tube and goes out the little tube and in the front it just takes in your inside air and, and blows out cool air and you could direct it with these fins. And you could plug it in right here, and we have a cord wrap installed right there. And you have optional drainage units, so you could, any water, instead of being expelled, would go to this repurposed um, soda cup here. You don't need to have this drainage tube if your, your air is um, under 70% humidity and you're in cooling mode. You need it if it's humid over 70% or if you're using the heater, um, but this saves power. So it's up to you whether you want to use it. There's a different mode to, to whether you want to use this tube or not when you, when you turn it on. And there's one more, there's two templates in use. There's a third template here 
that would go out here. So if you want to have this external, you just change this big vent, put it to the front, put this tube to the front here and have it outside. So it would suck the indoor air into this unit outside and blow it back in the cool air inside while both of these would be open on the outside. So when you're inside, you have the, the tubes on the back. When you're outside, you have the tubes in the front. So let's show some more detail on the, the, the tubes here venting outside. So I use a template here. It just happens to fit the rear window of the Armadillo trailer. Um, I may cut my own template later and just save this, or if, if I use this template, I just have to round the corner off here. But otherwise, it fits pretty good for the rear view window I have. Open the screen and open the, the window there. Um, these are easy to install. You just tell me. Turn the tubes here, and there's a little attachment thing you can see right there. Put it in and twist it. The other side, you just fit it outside the, the opening there. Here's what it looks like on the outside. So you have the the big tube and the small tube that the input is the big tube here and the output is the small tube. It takes in external air, uses the cooling unit which heats up the air and expels the heated air. So I'm going to show you how to operate um, their conditioning unit, but first I want to show you a problem I had with the power cord. It has a circuit breaker on it. Uh, it's um, designed for 10 amps, and whenever I plug it in, I plug it in, I test it, and reset it. See, it immediately resets. So right now I'm in the trailer on battery um, with inverter on, but I tried it in multiple circuits in the house, which I know are well grounded and there's no problem. And it's not even plugged in, so this is defective. So I've um, signed up with a Facebook group that has um, discussed EcoFlow Wave air conditioners and a few other, two other people have the same problem. So there's um, a defective cord out there and I, one of the people um, contacted the support for EcoFlow and said, they said that the Delta Max battery, um, which is an external um, battery power pack, its power cord works with this. Okay, so there are some good cords out there, but apparently some of these cords that are shipping um, are no, no, no good. You can't reset them. Fortunately, this is this plug is the same as a, um, a computer or PC plug with the three prong flat um, female outlet there plug. So what I did is I just got a um, a old PC plug. It's also rated 10 amp 10 amp cord. It doesn't have the circuit breaker protection, but this AC only uses at max. 820 watts, which is not like a typical um, portable AC unit, which has, you know, may easily use over a thousand watts and over, overload the circuit. So anyway, I'm going to put a, a meter on here and plug it in. Again, it, it, it only uses max 820 watts and you divide that by 120 volts, that's um, seven amps, and that's well below the 10 amp um, capacity of this cord. So it's plugged in now. So let's now go over to here, and you press the power button. And it cycles on. So right now I have it set um, in AC mode, let's turn it down. Um, well, I certainly don't need air conditioning right now. Let's turn it down to a nice cool 60 degrees. So there's, there's different modes here. 
Uh, let's go back here. And the, the blue, you can see the blue, that indicates that the air conditioning unit is, is working. So we could change the mode button on the left there to, that's heater. You see the sun icon and also the red there. That means it's heat, heating mode. Then when it's white, when it's white, um, it's in fan mode. It just is a fan. So again, you could cycle through to the AC, heater, fan, back to AC. You could also change the, the measurement right now. It's in um, Fahrenheit. You press both there's up and down buttons here. Apparently you could only go down to 60 F. But if you press both buttons, up, up and down buttons at the same time, it changes to Celsius. So this is set right now to um, 16 Celsius. Uh, what other buttons are good? There's the, on the right, there's a fan button. You can make the fan go faster if you want. There's also the, the mode button here, which, see, right now it's in normal mode. You press it and it goes to max mode, where it says max there. That means it will, the AC or heater unit will operate faster at max capacity. Um, press again, that's nighttime mode. That cycles um, on for 20 minutes and off for 10 minutes to make it easier, I guess, to sleep by operating. It's very quiet now. You have eco mode. That's where it also doesn't run as intensely. It's always running, but not as intensely as normal or max mode. And as you could see, the, the watch used and meters, it's only using, let's see, 80, 90, 100 watts there. Let's change it to max mode, just for fun. Let's see what it uses here. So now, you can see down here it says 180, 190 watts, 200, so pretty reasonable power usage there. So let's review the connections again. We have the, the, the cooled air coming out on the top here, and you can control over these directions with these um, fins. The intake is in the front here. And in the back, I have this temporary template which comes with the um, unit. It's a foam unit. I probably make a more permanent one that's more stiff and easier to install, but it, this one just happens to fit pretty good, except for the corner there. Um, what happens is it takes in external air with the big pipe on the left, and it spits out heated exhaust air on the right in a smaller pipe at the top. So the the rear unit is, is input and output for exhaust, and the, and the front of the unit is, is what's being air conditioned. So here's how to use the AC EcoFlow Wave externally. In that case, you um, hook the, the small hose up to the front here and put it in through a window through the hole. And you don't use other um, larger tube. Here's what it looks like from the inside. We have cold air coming in just through here. The, one disadvantage of this is you need to have some output 
because it's pushing cold air in, what I recommend is just to open up the top vent here a little bit just to allow the warm air on, on up high to escape. Let's review the EcoFlow Wave 2. Um, the pros and cons. It's the pros, it's um, compact. Um, this is a lot more compact than the tr traditional um, room portable air conditioners. I have two in my house um, and it's and it's smaller than EcoFlow Wave 1. It's efficient. It, it, um, it's a 5100 BTU AC, 6100 BTU heater. Um, right now I'm have, I have it on max, even though I really don't need it. Um, and it's using 330 watts, which is pretty good. It also has lots of flexibility points. Um, I only need to bring it when I need it. That is if I'm in the desert or beach areas or in the heat of summer. Um, most of the time I probably won't bring it, um, but it's kind of good um, to have it in those cases where I might need it. Um, it's another flexible point is it both heats and cools. The previous version of EcoFlow Wave 1 only cooled, but this does both. Uh, I could also use it indoors or outdoors. Um, indoors is more efficient because you're, it's taking in the inside air, which is already a little bit cooled. But if you use it outdoors, it's taking in the outside air. Um, let's talk about the cons. It's it's expensive. I got this for a thousand dollars. It was a pre-sale, pre-availability discount of three hundred dollars. Um, right now, there's a. It's still pretty new. It's you could still get a two hundred dollar coupon. Um, so you buy it for eleven hundred dollars. These are U.S. dollars, by the by the way. The regular price is $1,300. Um, also, some YouTube um, um, channels are offering 5% off discounts. Um, I'm not an affiliate. I bought this with my own money. But you could e easily find several affiliates. Um, a favorite of mine would be All About RVs, for example. They have He has a review there. Um, Although this is a compact unit, it's still still bulky um, for an armadillo trailer, which is only 10 by 6 feet. Um, of course, it's plenty of cooling unit to to cool this 60 square feet in here, but it, it takes up some space here. Um, it might be a little crowded here, um, depending on your setup, um, and especially at night. We, I, we could also have it on the other side, too. Um, it all depends on your arrangements. I'll probably, if I do bring it, I'll probably just leave it in the tow vehicle and use it when I need. And it doesn't take all, all the space. Of course, if you have a larger travel trailer, um, it won't be much of an issue. Um, I'm also worried about how much it uses um, if I don't have shore power. So if I'm away from, a, like, a, I usually don't go to RV camps, but I do go to the state parks and they have, um, often have power, um, but there's also BLM and Forest Service campgrounds which don't have power. So it could be using too much battery. I have a four, I upgraded from 100 to 400 amp hour battery, so it might work out for a few days, um, um, but we'll see. It depends on really how much, how many hours you need it. Because a lot of times during the heat of the day, um, we're out hiking or traveling around and, and don't need it. Um, so that could be an issue. Although I do have a um, a Toyota um, hybrid, Toyota Highlander hybrid, um, which has a 550 watt um, 120 volt outlet. So I could always use that. Um, I just have to have the car on as all. Well. So um, it might might be usable for boondocking. Um, but I would prefer to have shore power just so I don't have to worry about it. With more experience, I'll be able to tell whether I could use this boondocking or not. But, but as far as, um, if you, besides power, it's um, 
pretty efficient at cooling. You know, the specs say that it will cool 10 degrees Celsius or 18 degrees centigrade in five minutes. That is go from, um, let's see, it will go from 86 to 68 Fahrenheit or 30 to 20 degrees Celsius, which is pretty good in five minutes. One other con I forgot to mention is the power cord. This power cord with the circuit breaker does not work. It trips immediately, even with no load and even on my house circuit, not the trailer circuit. But it, fortunately, um, it is a 120 volt 10 amp power cord with the same kind of connector that you usually find on, on desktop computers, desktop PCs. So that works pretty well. Although, if you use this cord, you void the warranty if anything goes wrong. So um, I'm not recommending it, and I bear no responsibility if you try that. So keep that in mind, that even though it works with this cord, it voids the warranty. Um, so I think it's perfectly safe, but I'm not going to vouch for, for you if you try to do that. Um, bye.